Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Have a fun one for you today. I'm gonna do a little bit of a product overview on these mini stump grinders for your tiny machines. We're gonna take these two grinders out to a Bible camp that's, I think, about an hour away. I'm actually gonna be on vacation. I'm not even gonna be there. So there's gonna be two new operators that have never used my machines. That's something I don't normally recommend, but you know what? I want to have these tested for you. I think it's helpful for you to see somebody that's new using a piece of equipment, kind of learning the bumps in the road as you go along and figuring it out and how you get more efficient. I'm okay with that. I, I'm fine if something happens, I can deal with it. It's helpful for me, it's helpful for them, it's helpful for you. So some of you may have seen Paul, one of his funniest appearances was just a uh, unintentional cameo. I was doing a quick hitch overview up here and he kind of was coming down the hill and popped out and didn't realize he was on camera and then snuck away. It was pretty funny if you haven't seen that. But anyways, he mows up at a Bible camp about an hour away on a weekly basis and they have a whole bunch of stumps out there. So this was a great opportunity to do some video and to help somebody out as well. And so Paul and one other fellow are gonna be using these pieces of equipment put them to the test and kind of figuring it out. It's a great opportunity for you to see what it's like to kind of learn a new piece of equipment. And as always, I am proud to be sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers, made in America. If you need a solution to help that tippy feeling on your tractor, check them out. You order directly from Bora. There's gonna be a link down below and you can also get there from my website. One to six inch spacers can really help out that stability, that kind of uneasy feeling that you can have on your tractor. And if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, you can let me know that by leaving me a thumbs up. I would love to get that from you. If you wanna see more cool videos like this one, hit that subscribe button. And I do sell Balmalite products. I can ship them all over the country. If you want more information on one of these, links down below in the description or head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Let's give you a quick overview of what you're staring at, okay? So we have a John Deere 1025R, representative of any subcompact tractor out there. So this could be a Kubota, it could be a Mahindra, it could be a Coyote, it could be whatever you want. It's just a, a subcompact tractor with a category one three-point hitch on it, running the Balmalite 1P24 stump grinder. We're gonna get into more detail on that, but it's the most simplistic and basic design the most affordable as well. And here we have a Balmalite mini skid steer. They make a wheeled version and a track version, but this is a pretty new product. If you've seen the Toro Dingoes or the Vermeers or any of the other similar types of products, very big in the landscaping world, a really compact design. I did a nice overview video. Well, I thought it was pretty nice, but uh, kind of going over the specs and the details of it. We just got in, I had ordered this a while ago, but just got it in, the stump grinder, so it's really good timing. Wanted to include it so you can kind of have a comparison. And if you're in the market looking for a smaller machine for maybe a landscaping business these mini skid steers could be another option they are more expensive but another option to consider compared to a compact or subcompact tractor so i do want to mention as well there are other videos out there of the 1p24 so you don't just have to take this as your only example so if you're doing your research and your homework just google it or put it in your youtube search bar the bob and light 1p24 you'll see a lot of different videos and scenarios so you can really get a good feel besides just what you're gonna see in this video of how it operates. Now, one of the great features I do love is the fact that it is quick hitch compatible. We did a video a little earlier this year about the 3P24, which is the next size up, and that unit is not quick hitch compatible. Now, the reason for that is this is a, a fixed grinder, okay? It doesn't swing, there's no arc pattern to it. But with the 3P24, this rotor blade is shifted 90 degrees. So it's facing this way, and it's hydraulically controlled to swing left or right. So what that requires, is more space in between where the quick hitch would be because you have that PTO shaft that's tied in that also has to swing left or right. And that's also the same reason why the Del Marino or most offset flail mowers are not gonna be quick hitch compatible. It's all tied into that PTO shaft. You have to be able to swing or have that arc. And a lot of times the quick hitch is just too restrictive. So besides the three point hitch, the only other point of connection with your machine is gonna be your standard 540 RPM rear PTO. Again, that's the same for any of the subcompact tractors that are out there or any of the compact tractors for that matter. And same thing with the category one three point hitch. So there's no other electric or hydraulic connections that are required to operate the 1P24. So with this unit, the teeth are facing you, facing the back of the tractor. So what you wanna do is lift it up with your three point control, take it to the back side of the stump, lower it down to a maximum of five inches per pass, and you're gonna slowly drive forward. You don't wanna have it skip or bounce. You wanna go nice and controlled, and you're gonna know that. If you start to skip and bounce, you're going too fast, so that's when you wanna slow down. And so what's good about this simple design is that even for you larger tractors, this unit is rated up to a maximum of 50 engine horsepower, so a lot of the larger compacts as well 
but it doesn't require those additional hydraulic hookups. We've talked about that. A lot of tractors don't have them on there and it's just a very simple design. So if you don't have those hydraulic options and you don't want to spend as much money because the cost goes up a lot as well, then this could be a good option to consider. Now over here we have a different version. There's obviously not a PTO shaft involved on this mini skid steer, so this is gonna be driven by a hydraulic motor. So your only connections in this case are gonna be an attachment plate. So similar to tractors having a John Deere quick attach or a skid steer quick attach, there's different versions for the smaller mini skid steers like the Balmolite, the Toro Dingo, the Vermeer, and so on, or the Bobcat even. And you can get a different attachment plate up here to mount that to the front of your loader. And then the other connection are gonna be the included hoses that'll tie into your hydraulic system to turn the rotor on and off. And so and then instead of controlling the up and down with the three point hitch, you're gonna control the angle of this with the curl roll function and then raising and lowering your front end loader. So similar to the rotor design on the 1P24, the teeth are gonna be facing you. And so you're gonna to wanna to start on the back side of the stump and then slowly reverse and taking off a maximum of a two inch cutting depth Per pass. All right, let's talk a little bit about the business end on both of these units. A little bit of a different design. You have a 24 inch rotor on the 1P24 and there's an 18 inch rotor on the S14. I kind of thought the 14 was going to stand for the rotor size, but the specs say it's 18 inches and the larger versions of this are bigger than that. So I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what the 14 stands for, but that's what it is. On the 1P, you're going to have 34 carbide tip teeth, and it also includes six replacement teeth. Over on the S14, you're going to have 12 teeth, a bit of a different design. Wear Sharp is the, uh, the trademark name that they have. I believe you can kind of rotate them around to get additional wear out of the entire surface. I feel like a long time ago, this is what used to be on the 1P24, and they've switched up the design a little bit which I don't seem to mind at all. A few other features I feel are worth mentioning is that this is gonna be a full 350 pounds, which given the very small stature of the entire attachment is pretty incredible. A lot of that weight is gonna be found right in this three quarter inch thick plate, you know, that is your rotor. And touching on the rotor, I did wanna mention as well, the teeth are sticking out a full inch and a quarter from the plate. This is gonna be good for two reasons. First, it's gonna keep the cutting edge away from where all the debris is building up to help prevent clogging. And number two, it's also gonna help with heat dissipation. But if things still happen to get clogged up or jammed up, as could happen when you're grinding stumps, you are gonna be protected your entire drive line by a slip clutch. So no shear pins or shear bolts to worry about, which I can imagine that would be a real pain in the neck. So it's nice to see this has a slip clutch on it. One of the other cool features is called the self-regulating feed. And to think of it kind of like an additional float. And so the rotor itself has a little bit of play to go forwards and backwards. So if you do find yourself moving too quickly forward, it's not going to damage the machine or the attachment. Basically, it's gonna come back, lean back a little bit, allow the weight of the grinder to still grind and cut through the material. And so that's gonna be a bit of a visual indicator for you, the operator. Once you start to see it kind of kick up on the back a little bit, it's time for you to slow down and let the grinder get caught up. So this same feature is also gonna be found on the S14 and you will notice they do have greasable zerks at all the pivot points. And a couple final notes, you will notice there is a discharge cover on the exiting side on both of these units to prevent that debris from kind of flying all over. It's gonna deflect it right down to the ground and out of the way. One difference between these two in particular is gonna be the parking stands that you'll find on the 1P24. I noticed the S14 doesn't have them. It is a smaller unit. It's gonna kind of lay on its side. It mounts a little bit differently than the 1P24. You do wanna make sure you take these up and out of the way when you are in operation. Alrighty, well that's going to wrap up the overview. I think I've covered most of the highlights there. Again, we can ship these. We ship them all over the country. All the products that we sell over at Goodworks Tractors, but we are going to get to the field test. I'm going to be excited to see it just like you guys. Remember, I'm not going to be there. So a couple of new operators, let's see how their learning curve goes and how these perform for them. So good luck guys.
uh, the speed and the depth each mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like if I take too much, the thing starts bouncing around all over the place. Um, and if I go too fast, it yeah. starts bouncing around. Yeah. So, is it hard to see when you're doing that? It is. It's kind of hard on your neck. Yeah. Yeah. Because your everything's turned yeah. around. Because uh -huh. I'm kind of sitting on an angle there, looking yeah. underneath. I don't know if there's a way to do it eventually by feel. You know, yeah. once I get it down, and maybe I can look ahead and yeah. just sort of. But I don't know it that well yet. Okay. So, <laughs> so I find the same thing on the other one too. But I can see it directly because I'm looking right down at it. Uh -huh. Now that's hydraulic driven. So I'm only pulling off half an inch at the most at a time. But, and I'm using mostly the forward and back, side to side to just where I'm cutting. Okay. Now that one will actually come to a complete stop because the hydraulics are not strong enough mm -hmm. to turn it anymore. So then I just go forward and then uh, either raise it a little bit or back up little bit so. yeah so mine indication is, is the hydraulic pressure goes way up I can see it on the dial out of the corner of my eyes but you can watch the wheel and eventually it'll just stop and it's easier to move it back uh, move it forward so that I'm not cutting instead of raising it up because the the uh, raise and lower bar is not very responsive so I have to actually pull it back quite a bit before it actually responds so it's faster just to move it back where I was already cut yeah. before I come back in now. Yeah, the other the other thing I think I'm going to try in the next one is maybe um, go a little further down before moving over because what I'm finding is I lose it. Oh. You can see we were just yeah. digging around there. Yeah. I thought I was pretty good until I uncovered half yes. of the stump there. Yes. So if I go down much further and work my way over, at least I know I hit the whole oh, thing. Oh, I see. Because okay. I, I can't see it. Yeah. Well, I was able to see, this stump was up quite a ways here. I yeah. was able to see the whole thing up to this point until oh. just recently we kicked this out of the way. Yeah. Um, but I, now I'm gonna get down into the dirt a little bit, but I'll start at this side and work my way that way and just get the thing set at the height that I'm gonna do. Now, when you first start, like the stump isn't even. This yeah. stump over here is not right. even. Yeah. So I'll plane the top off a little bit so it's flat according to how the tractor's sitting on the ground. Yes. You know, if I'm down on a hill, it's going to cut gonna it this way, it, but yeah. that's okay. Just so you're starting with a flat surface, and then you can set the thing where you want it, and then use your speed to keep it from chattering all over the place. So, Would more weight work on it, do you think? I don't think it wants more weight. Okay. I think what you need to do is let the weight of the machine do the work and let it cut. And if I'm getting too far this way, I just wait for it, and it, it'll Catch come back to. down. Um, I come towards the end, I find out that, you know, the thing is still a little bit on an angle and I have to lift up as I'm getting that, yeah, that last final. little bit because it wants to just drop right down into the ground. Save the whole, yeah, and shave the whole thing all at once. So, anyway, it's, it's starting to feel like I'm being able to do it smoother, you know, than I was when I first started. So. And I'm finding something similar to that, starting to go all the way across it because, like you said, the tractor will move the up and down portion so you want to get that plane whatever right. it is even if it's not a flat plane it's the plane that the tractor or the bombalite wants to go right in right. with the train around it well you've already done four then essentially I've well, done three yeah I'm on my this is my fifth one fifth one oh yeah oh yeah you're going but these guys than I am. these guys went really fast the little ones yeah yeah, especially if they've been sitting for a while. Yeah, I can blow those out of there in no time. Oh, good. It's, I just well, thought I, I wanted be doing to. Those. I want to find out what this big one was going to be like. <laughs> maybe I should do, be doing the little ones. <laughs>
Alrighty, well that's going to wrap it up for today. Remember, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you if you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more cool videos like this one, hit that subscribe button. And if you're looking for a stump grinder or anything else for your tractor, head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.